Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. This is uh, Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are in the uh, lectures of 6th week or the module 6 in sequence. This is the 32nd lecture and this uh, is involved with the semi inverse method of solution. Uh, semi inverse method of solution in terms of theory of elasticity approach to solve problems. And in that sequence, uh, we will learn uh, how do we solve problem with a typical example. Now, in that sequence, uh, we always uh, in every lecture, I try to cover what we have learned so far. Uh, this time, I uh, will try to cover it in more brief uh, as quickly as I can. History, aircraft development from a small one at Kitty Hawk by Wright brothers to the huge one uh, like the AN225. We have uh, learned uh, history of solid mechanics or structural analysis or the way you say. Uh, then uh, various types of loads encountered or experienced by aircraft structure is uh, discussed where how those loads comes. And then uh, we have learned uh, the inertia loads uh, play a huge role in, in design and uh, that in that context we have learned the flight envelope. And uh, flight envelope also varies with respect to a particular type of aircraft uh, depending upon its uh, service condition. We have learned how can we find out uh, from the overall external load uh, the bending moment and shear force is encountered by wing and fuselage. Then we have learned three dimensional structures we have solved a few problem in three dimensional structures with respect to landing gear problems. And then uh, we have uh, started the deflections uh, energy methods uh, in that we have learned Castiglianos method, total potential energy method, complementary energy method and we have learned a very, very good method what I say that uh, probably lays the fundamental foundation of uh, future numerical analysis that is uh, the Rayleigh ridge method. To some extent uh, in that discussion came the variation, uh, variational calculus not that way, but anyway you are introduced may be. So, and then the theory of elasticity got introduced to stress, then equilibrium with uh, body forces, surface forces stress transformation, concept of stress transformation, our total discussion was uh, predominantly in the Cartesian coordinate system. Then from there the principal stresses, how do we find a plane uh, where there is no shear stress and from there uh, we dis have discussed uh, that uh, what are the properties of principal stresses, how invariant is observed. Then uh, we have established strain displacement relation, then compatibility, compatibility condition how it is important. Without that uh, solution is not practical, we need to satisfy the com compatibility condition or equations. Then uh, stress strain relations we have found out, then in the last class, last lecture we have covered uh, the way how a problem is formulated and then solved. In that method, we have already solved uh, two, three problems uh, with respect to the inverse method. In the inverse method, we directly assume 
the stress function, L is stress function and then we try to put the bound find out we, we try to find out the stresses components of stresses and then accordingly putting the boundary uh, sorry putting the constants to 0 or modifying the constants uh, we can we can achieve some problem which represents the air stress, stress functions properly. So, with that note uh, we will try to solve uh, problems in theory of elasticity with semi inverse method. It is almost similar, similar uh, we will use uh, some uh, conclusions like the pure bending portion what we have learned in the semi inverse method part of the equation that we will be using to solve this particular a particular example. So, before we go for the solution of the particular example let us get introduced to the method. So, in this process what we do? So, disadvantage of uh, inverse method we are determining problems to fit an assumed solution whereas, in structural analysis the reverse is the case. So, that is quite obvious, but the solution may be simplified by looking at the shape of the boundary and the applied loading. Semi inverse method is popular in that sense it is suggested by St. Venant semi inverse method is suggested by St. Venant. Here assumptions are made to, st to stress or displacement components, but before we go since the St. Venant Venant's principle is better to come across once. Uh, this is important, uh, these lines are important, I please I will read, I will try to explain with one example in the next slide I will try to explain. I will tell you in a very very simplified words also that will not include all these, but those are not totally correct. Simplification always sacrifices something. Anyway, if a system of forces acting on a small portion of a surface of an elastic body is replaced by another statically equivalent of force acting on the same portion of the surface, this redistribution of loading produces substantial changes in the stress only in the intimate neighborhood, it changes substantially, but in the intimate neighborhood of the loading and the stresses are essentially the same in the parts of the body which are at large distance in comparison with the linear dimension of surface on which the forces are changed. Linear dimension of the linear dimension of the surface on which the forces are changed. So, it says that if I replace by equivalent or statically equivalent force system. At the vicinity, it is not the same case, but at some distance, it is same. And that some distance is what? It is that distance is governed by this linear dimension of the surface on which the forces are changed. That is a principle uh, is really very, very important observation and uh, noted by St. Venant. Uh, this helps us a lot. In the next page, we will see how it helps us, but without looking into this thing, we have considered this in our mind and we have solved problems already in, in, in your mechanics, in your other um, say here also whatever we have covered pro during problem solving, we have assumed this. So, uh, by statically equivalent systems, we mean that the two distribution of forces have the same resultant force and moment. So, let us see the example. So, uh, by statically equivalent system uh, we mean that the two distribution of uh, forces have the same resultant force and moment. So, what is shown here that uh, if two p loads are applied 
at some section A A, this is the distribution of stresses because of this two concentrated load at this point. But while the section is L apart which is more than the B, it is uniform. That is what we always talk about, is not it? We say that uh, load is applied at the tip of the member and the stress is uniform P by A. So, that P by A here it is uh, say if the area is A, uh, then it is 2 P by A. So, that is what is uh, con said it in a different way. It says that uh, if it is replaced by a force system if it is replaced by many other forces summing up to P and uh, statically equivalent, then uh, it, it is same at a distance uh, L where it is more than B. So, both the forces will uh, induce similar type of stresses. With this context, uh, with this understanding, we will move forward to our next slide and in next slide we will solve uh, a problem. This problem is quite popular uh, from your first day of mechanics probably. Problem is similar only difference is that we have assumed a different coordinate system. We have drawn the problem in a different way. The boundary condition or the fixed support is on the right hand side. At the center of the beam, we have assumed the origin and x is going this way and y is coming downward. So, with this consideration, we will do uh, it is h b this is d. So, the section dimension. So, with this consideration, let us try to find out the solution. So, solution means a stress as well as deflection h is much less than the d. I, I the loaded beam can be regarded as an example in plane stress condition. So, upper and lower edges are free from load and the resulting shear forces at x equals to 0 is p. So, there is no load on the upper and lower edge, there is a shear force distributed shear force acting at this edge which results into P. This is a boundary condition we will use later. Uh, we can see that sigma x x at any point of the section is proportional to y. Bending moment at any section is proportional to x. So, this sigma x s is proportional to y, this part already we have seen in our previous inverse method and uh, that uh, brings us to this c 1 y cube by 6 and then b a bending moment at any section is proportional to x that is the reason x factor is coming here and that governs this lines uh, observation to our physical uh, condition gives us the way that this part is something like this. So, with this note what we can uh, do we can start. Let us uh, assume for a trial sigma x x is equals to c 1 x y where c 1 is constant. So, uh, this is uh, same c 1 small or capital we are following this, uh, I, I jumped here to give you that observation, but it can have from this type of uh, approach also where following this y and x, x and y multiplication also we can assume. And then if we integrate that, what do we have, we get the same term what we have there. And we also have two functions f 1 x multiplied by y and f 2 x multi without any multiplication as two functions of x, because we are integrating uh, the partial differentiation equation with respect to y. 
where f 1 x and f 2 x are known as functions of x. Now, the compatibility it is satisfied there is no doubt, but uh, to satisfy this what we get? We get one more relation in terms of f 1 and f 2. So, while we do this if we carry out this uh, term by term I can again explain like the way I have explained earlier, but it better you try once. So, e with application or to satisfy the compatibility condition what we have is that y del 4 f 1 del x 4 plus del 4 f 2 uh, d it is a complete derivative because these are have only a function of x. So, with that note we move forward since uh, f 1 f 2 are functions of x only since f 1 and f 2 are functions of x only the second term in the above equation is independent of y, but this must be satisfied for all x and y in the beam this is possible only if uh, this is equals to 0. Uh, this stating this is very easy, but it requires a lot of uh, lot of understanding or on the mathematical equations. Uh, if you think deep you will also come to the same conclusion that this individually these two functions must be 0 to be satisfied by the grad 4 phi equation. Now, uh, if we integrate all these terms f 1 is equals to what we have is that c 2, c 3, c 4, c 5 uh, and f 2 is equals to 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, it is changing the power I hope it is there is no point of explaining it. So, the phi changes with constants starting from c 1 to c 9, 9 constants we, has, we have to find out and to find out those constants let us see what do we do. We need to, to put the boundary conditions, but with this constants in place we can find out the expressions for sigma y y and tau x y. So, this those expressions are quite obvious as it is shown here and we try to put the boundary condition this boundary condition is interesting sigma sigma y is 0 at y equals to plus minus d by 2 for all x if we go back to the previous previous uh, equation uh, previous figure we can easily observe that at this and at this which are plus minus d by 2 definitely it is stress free and that is the reason we say that this boundary condition holds. So, with this note uh, we move forward so the boundary condition as it is said in the last page is repeated here and we apply the boundary condition once we apply the boundary condition to sigma y y we have c a very very interesting one again minus 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 otherwise it is same and again either I need to mathematically prove or I can simply assume that it holds and we can proceed. These equations uh, must be valid for all x between 0 to L x for 0 to L only when this this constants are equals to 0. That is why it is made to 0 this 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 this. So, both the equations should hold only in case while these are individually equals to 0. Uh, these are proved uh, in, in maths we would not spend time for that and consequently these four conditions this is for this particular nature of uh, the boundary conditions uh, implementation uh, equations we get that c 2 c 3 c 4 c 7 are equals to 0 
and then tau x y is equals to we have minus of c 1 by 2 y square minus c 4. We have one more boundary condition that is tau x y on y equals to plus minus d by 2 is also equals to 0 that is it is also shear stress free it is not only the normal stress free the boundary at top and bottom there is no shear stress also. This is a small correction this is definitely not two equal signs this is equals to 0. So, with that uh, note uh, what we see is that this gives us a relation between C 1 and C 4 and as I mentioned at the beginning while we were defining the problem uh, that uh, distributed shear stresses at x equals to 0 uh, that means, if we go back at this point upper and lower edges are free from load and the resulting shear force at x equals to 0 is p. So, that is what we will implement now. This is implemented here and if we implement that uh, h is multiplied with to make it force. So, so we with simple integration substitution of the tau x y whatever we have this value and other things and it yields that c 1 is equals to minus of 12 p by d cube h and since, since i is already is quite well known equals to minus p by i. And at the end all the 9 constants are known. Once we have all the 9 constants known, we can have expressions for sigma x as well as sigma y and tau x y. So, the tau x y reduces to uh, the expressions are something like this as we have uh, if after implementation of the constants sigma x x is equals to minus p x y by i sigma y y is definitely 0 everywhere and tau x y is equals dependent on the y square and accordingly we have. So, in, 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 in the next portion we will try to solve the displacements. Displacements equations are interesting to solve it is a simple mathematics now there is no not much of, of elasticity or structures only boundary conditions are there boundary conditions in terms of mathematics you need to understand and you need to implement. So, keeping in mind what we have the strain expression we put from the stress what we have we integrate that. Similarly, for f sub y we have this expression and gamma x y we have this expression we name this as this. 1 2 3. If we integrate there will be unknowns definitely. So, we get g 1 y g 2 x. So, uh, with that and definitely gamma also will be there. So, we can. So, uh, we, we have uh, found out by integration the del u, uh, u and v here what we see that since it is a partial derivation of x. So, integration gives us a function of y and uh, g 2 gives us a function of x and similarly we will be using this expression. So, incidentally one thing is one typographical mistake is noticed you please uh, note that this is not multiplication this is uh, I should do it with red ink this blue is not visible this is a positive plus sign. So, with this note uh, please I think it is you can also easily put it and in the next slide while we will move we will use these equations we will substitute these values uh, there in, in the again these, these, these values in the third equations and we will proceed further. So, we go to the next equation. So, substituting in 3 uh, equation 3 what do we have? 
and little bit rearrangement definitely we have that is the reason we have partial derivative with respect to y and we have also the other term uh, with respect to x and it is rearranged uh, a little bit I hope you can easily carry it out and then the left hand side is a this rearrangement is done uh, to with keeping in mind with the things that all the y terms are kept on the left hand side and the all the x terms are kept on the right hand side. So, the left hand side is a function of y and right hand side is a function of x. A function of x can be equal to a function of y for all values of x and y only when they are both equal to constant that is quite obvious this phenomena will be using in many part while you will go for the higher uh, higher stages of uh, say any 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 course say it is if it is CFD or um, uh, dynamics structural dynamics or anywhere. So, anyway uh, this is a mathematical phenomena and uh, according to that we assume that it is a constant A. Okay. So, we put this is equals to a 1 and that is the other side also is also equals to a 2 and again we rearrange um, once we rearrange and integrate we get g 1 and g 2. We have two more constants because of int integration that is a 2 and a 3. So, all total we have three unknowns again fine. So, we need to find out those three unknowns. How can we find out those three unknowns? We have we are in the process of finding displacement all functions are in terms of u v. So, we need to put boundary condition in terms of u and v. So, while we put uh, in terms of that u v the boundary condition what we can see let us uh, see. So, then we with the displacements are u v as it is put as a 1 a 2 a 1 a 3 all the constants u uh, v is completely written here and the boundary conditions at x equals to l and y equals to 0 that means at this point as well at, at this point the other x equals to l sorry not at this point at this point x equals to l y equals to 0 here u v u equals to v equals to del v del x that means the slope is also 0 because the structure is supposed to bend like this this slope is always 0 these are 0. So, with that uh, implementation of three boundary conditions uh, easily we can find out a 1, a 2 and a 3 and if we solve those uh, what do we get is that a 1 is equals to p l square by 2 i z i minus 1 plus nu p d square by 4 e i a 2 is equals to 0 and a 3 equals to p l cube by thrice e i and if we substitute Substitute those values a 2 is 0. So, this is a y function is there and uh, we, we just put it here and in a different way and we also put the v boundary condition and the deflection curve for the neutral axis since it is neutral axis which parameter goes to 0 that is y equals to 0. So, so, v expression y equals to put to 0 and we have this expression only. So, this is the equation of the deflection line this is the line we are talking about. So, this is equation of this line okay. And one more interesting point probably you have solved uh, using various methods that the tip deflection is always p l cube by 3 e i. So, that if you put x equals to 0 this goes off this is also equals to 0 and we have the desired solution is equals to p l cube by 3 e i. So, with this note uh, the preliminary discussion of, of um, theory of elasticity 
uh, ends and uh, in next two weeks we will solve specific problems uh, with help of theory of elasticity. We will see how it is important, how does it gives insight to a certain uh, problem and uh, accordingly we will uh, learn a lot. So, uh, we, we have come to the end of uh, today's lecture. In this process uh, the usual the reference slide comes and also comes the conclusion page where we have learned that semi inverse method of solution uh, using one example of cantilever beam. And uh, with that note uh, I thank you all for attending the course. Thank you.